Electrons and atoms occupy what we call orbitals. Orbitals are not physical structures. They're just the shape the electron takes as it forms a standing wave around the nucleus. And the orbital can hold two electrons, uh, one spin up electron, one spin down electron. So we always have to have opposite spins to occupy two electrons in one orbital. So let's start with a string, a vibrating string like a guitar string. It can vibrate in, in a couple of different ways, a number of ways. And um, what it does, it forms what we call standing waves. Standing waves, because the waves don't move. Uh, they stay in one spot. They stand in one spot. So the fundamental harmonic of a wave would be this. So when we look, the wave is all up, the red, or it's all down, the blue, but not at the same time. So over time, we watch it, it goes between the two. It oscillates between up and down over time. But if we do a snapshot, we find only one, the red or the blue, but not both. So that's our fundamental move. We're going to find that in our electrons inside an atom also. So uh, this would be a, a confined wave. Uh, we can also treat this as an uh, electron in a box. Uh, but electron in an atom is also confined. It can't just leave the electron. It can't just leave the atom. So we have these modes. So that's our fundamental mode. Where we're only seeing half a, a wave. The first harmonic we would be seeing the whole wave. So when we take a snapshot, we're either seeing the red or a different snapshot, we're seeing the blue. Over time, we see them both. And to figure out the probability of finding the electron, we're actually look at the wave squared. So all the negatives become positive. So if we look at this, we'd find the electron being over here or over here. But then we're going to have this spot in the middle where the probability of finding the electron goes down to zero. So we call that a node. And we find that also. So on n equals 1, we have just that. So there's no nodes on n equals 1. On n equals 2, our first harmonic, we're going to have a node in there. And the node is going to take two different forms. So we're going to start to get different shapes to our orbitals. So the two forms for n equals 2 is either a planar node, a flat or conical sheet, or a spherical node that surrounds the nucleus. So that would be our n equals 2. It will have one node on it. n equals 3, we're going to have two nodes. So each time we go off in a harmonic, we're going to add these sheets or layers where the probability of going finding the electron goes to zero. We're also adding numbers of lobes with an L. So n equals one, we have one area of finding electrons. n equals two, we have two areas of finding electrons. n equals three, there's going to be at least three areas. We're going to see it's going to uh, add up more than that. So the the surfaces in between are the more uh, important ones. And um, we go up to n equals four, and then we're going to have three surfaces where the electrons electron density goes down to zero. So our um, Fundamental harmonic would be a 1s. A 1s electron is going to form a sphere. So this is a radius from the nucleus out. So it's spherical, completely spherical, uniform around the radius at any angles. But um, we have a shell around the nucleus where the electron occupies. So that'll be our 
one area of electron density for the 1s electron. As you go up to level two, now we're going to get some um, two ways to add on that planar node. So on 2s, now we're forming a layer inside a layer. So the s is always spherical. And as we go up in our harmonics, we're adding layers to it, onion layers. So on the 2s, we have our, this is psi squared, the wave function squared. So the wave function itself would be positive going down to negative and going up towards zero again. So when we squirt, we have positive a surface with no electrons and then another positive area. And uh, we have two ways of showing this. This is uh, just the square of the wave function. And then this is divided by the uh, surface of that. So we find that we have more electrons in the outer shell. And that always is true. We always have more electrons in the outer shell and less on the inner shell. So this is one of the ways that we um, add that surface that goes down to zero. So that's a spherical surface. And as you go up in S, we keep adding those layers. So 2S will have one spherical node where probability goes down to zero. 3S will have two, 4S will have three. So we keep adding those spherical layers where the probability goes down to zero. The other way that we do on level two is forming the P sublevel. So we're adding a planar node. So now we have a plane that cuts the orbital in half. So that is one orbital containing one or two electrons. And that one electron will be on both sides of this plane where the probability of finding it will go down to zero. So planar nodes equals the angular momentum quantum number L. Uh, so S, L is zero, and we have zero planar nodes. For P, L is one, we have one planar node. For D, L is two, we have two planar nodes. For F, L is three, we have three planar nodes. So that is how we're breaking our sublevels down. So this is one uh, orbital, one P orbital. And of course, we have a total of three P orbitals. So they add, stack up to form a roughly spherical shape around the nucleus. And the different colors here represent the different size of the wave function, the crest and the trough. And of course, when we look for probability, we do psi squared. So we're going to find the electron in either one of these areas uh, with equal probability. So that's level two. For level three, we're going to have level three, we're going to have two of these surfaces where the electron's density goes down to zero. So for S, we're going to add a second nether layer inside that spherical, inside the sphere. For a 3P, I have that drawn here. A 3P, we still have the two lobes. So P is always two lobes. We have that uh, planar separation going through there, the planar node. But now we also have a spherical node coming around. So for the sublevels, the number of planar nodes are set by the type of sublevel. Uh, the first time we see our P, 2P, we're going to have zero spherical nodes. So the first time we see any of our sublevels, so zero spherical nodes. And as we go up from there, we keep adding those spherical nodes. So the 2P has no spherical nodes, but the 3P has one spherical node. So we still have the planar node that separates the two sides of it, but now we're adding spherical nodes as we go up. So that's 3P. Then we have 3D. And um, for D here, D has two planar nodes. So uh, the number, total number of nodes is always going to be n minus one. So for level three, 
we had our two spherical for S, a spherical planar for P, and now we have two planars for D. So we will slice it with a plane, slice it with a plane, so we end up with four areas between the planes. Uh, and then down here, we have a cone that points up and a cone that points down. So we have the two lobes as if it was a P orbital, but they're the same sign of the wave. And then in between, we have a donut, a torus, that separates them with the separate uh, sign, opposite sign of the wave. So we have a, a, a conical surface up, a conical surface down, uh, two planar surfaces that cut these in half. So for level three, we have our two nodes. And then level four. So these are the layers. So we're going to have a total of three nodes in between. So those nodes will separate out. So we have four layers of electrons. And the outer layers are always occupying the most electrons and it diminishes as we go inner. For 4P, we have our one planar and then two spherules. So again, a total of three nodes, areas where the electron density goes to zero. For the 4D, we have our two planars and now one spherical. So we have our three areas and for the F, we have three planar nodes now. And they can come in a couple of different ways. So in this one, we're taking like a pizza pie, putting three cuts across it, with three planar nodes. So now we end up with six pieces, six uh, slices of pie. The other way is that we can take one of these four lobed d orbitals and slice it horizontal in half. So I'll turn the four into eight. So we get eight areas of electron density. Another way we have a plane in the middle, just like a p orbital, but then a cone on top and a cone on bottom. So again, our three lobe, uh, nodes where the probability goes down to zero. So uh, the summary here, our total nodes is always going to be n minus one. Planar nodes equals our L, so to get a spherical nodes, it's n minus L minus one. The other way is that whenever sublevel shows up, it always has no spherical nodes. Then as it grows from there, we keep adding spherical nodes. So this keeps going up and up. So our electrons, a, a wave, it forms a standing wave. These are atomic orbitals. So this is an atom all by itself, no influence from another nucleus around. So we will see that uh, these shapes will change as we create molecules with them. So as we add another nucleus, the standing wave will respond to the other nucleus, and we'll create some additional shapes that can have the bond angles that we see in our molecules. And then we'll also see that uh, the orbitals can extend over not just the one atom, but will extend over maybe a couple of atoms or more in molecular orbitals.